we've all been there at some point or other, standing in a fabric shop, staring at our reference photos, desperately racking our brains trying to figure out exactly what type of fabric a costume has been made from. Sometimes this is fairly easy, sometimes it's a bit more complicated. However, it becomes far easier once we have at our disposal a good working knowledge of fabric types, their names and how they behave. I'm Tilda, I go by Wood Smoke and Words Online, and in this video I will be endeavouring to demystify fabric names and hopefully <laughs> starting you off down the road to far easier fabric hunting adventures. Fabrics nowadays are made up of a huge range of fibres, both natural and man-made. Historically, however, there were only really four natural fibres that fabrics were woven from. Wool, silk, cotton and linen. Wool, obviously, spun from sheep's wool. Silk, which is spun from the cocoons of silkworms. Cotton, which comes from the fibrous bowl that grows around the seeds on cotton plants. And linen, which comes from the cellulose fibres that grow inside the stalks of flax plants. Each of these fabrics has very different properties and qualities and they behave in different ways. And in this video, I will be explaining exactly what those are. Man-made fibres can be split into two different categories. Firstly, you have rayon and acetate, which are radically altered fibres that began life as forms of cellulose, usually from wood pulp, and synthetic fibres, uh, which are forms of plastic. Um, as fabrics, these will have names like polyester, viscose, rayon, nylon, uh, and they're often used as cheaper look-alike alternatives to natural fibres. Now, when fabric hunting, it is very important to remember that fabric names usually come in two parts. There are a few exceptions to this, but primarily you will see fabric names start with the fibre first and then the weave second. So some examples include, and I'm going to have to read from a list here, uh, cotton twill and wool twill, silk chiffon, viscose chiffon, silk satin, polyester satin, linen canvas, cotton canvas, silk taffeta, polyester taffeta. It is very common to shorten these names to just satin or twill, but if you do that, it's really important to remember that you're providing quite literally half the information, which can be fine if you're not looking for a specific fibre content, but if you are, then it kind of creates problems for obvious reasons. Some fabrics, of course, are also blends. Um, it's very common to find wool, which is 70% wool and 30% polyester. Uh, another example would be silk velvet, that nowadays is usually at least a little bit viscose, um, usually about 18%. Some fabrics, such as muslin, are, are only ever woven from one fibre, in this case cotton, um, and so it's really unusual that you would have to specify cotton muslin. Um, these are outliers, though. The best possible way to get your eye in, as it were, is to look for fabric in reputable shops that label their fabrics honestly and correctly. Uh, my London-based audience will know that Goldhook Road is not a good place to learn fabric names and types. I once saw a fabric there labelled as Silk Satan, and it was neither Silk nor Satan. Whilst you don't actually need to buy your fabrics in these more reputable stores, Getting free samples from them to compare them to cheap alternatives in other shops can be a really, really useful trick. For those in the UK, places like McCulloch and Wallace, John Lewis, Top Fabric, Pongees, um, Whaley's of Bradford are all very trustworthy places. And for those outside of the UK, anywhere that is kind of a chain or a family owned brand, um, for people in America, places like Joann's um, or Mood Fabrics. Um, you're basically looking for somewhere that has a reputation that they want to uphold um, and doesn't want to lie to their customers. Um, going into those stores and looking for the type of fabric that you want ideally and touching it and feeling it and creasing it and seeing how it moves, how it feels to the touch, is it cold, what the fibres feel like, and if you can get a free sample, taking it home and testing it to see what the fibres are like, can really help you get used to how that fabric should behave and how that fabric should feel so that when you go into a cheaper store you can tell if something is real linen or if it's a mix or if something is silk or polyester. The best most thorough ways to identify fabrics require a piece of that fabric and some rather thrilling tests. Um, 
The most common of these is the burn test, and it isn't a foolproof method, but it is a really great start. Um, you can find a more detailed explanation for it online by searching, let me check my notes, uh, the burn test to identify textile fibres. However, I will explain the general idea here. Make sure you have a fire safe container for your fabric, a metal bowl outside or a metal sink for example, I'm just using an old saucepan. You'll need a source of flame, a long match or a stove lighter or something like that, tweezers or tongs to hold your fabric sample and a jug of water nearby, I've got a water bottle in the top corner there. Uh, these are the fabric samples I'm going to be demonstrating the burn test with. So this one in my hands now and on the floor is some brown 100% cotton. This is some 100% wool. This here is uh, some silk dupion, again 100% silk. Uh, this is some polyester satin, uh, synthetic. And this here is some black 100% linen. So you'll want to hold your sample to the flame and carefully observe what happens, including the smell of the smoke, the way that it burns and what kind of ash it produces. So cotton, which is what's burning here, is um, something that smells like burning paper, leaves or wood, and it has an afterglow and leaves a yellow residue once it's finished burning. You can see um, that yellow residue um, just on the edge there. And you can see the ash is quite kind of dry and papery and crispy. Um, it doesn't really like break up in, in your hand when you try and touch it. Um, it's not very powdery. It kind of flakes away. Uh, so now the next sample that we're going to be testing is linen, um, which burns very similarly to cotton. So again, just holding it to your flame and then observing the way that it burns this one kind of held a flame a little bit better than cotton. The cotton sort of smouldered away more, whereas the linen is truly burning, although as you can see here, it burned itself out. Um, and as it burns away, that yellow-brown residue starts to develop again at the edge of uh, where it's burned. And then when you touch the ash, unlike cotton, it's really soft and powdery. It looks almost like um, eyeshadow or something. There, you can kind of really see that residue on the edge there. So the next sample that we're going to test is wool. Now, when wool burns, it'll smell like burning hair or feathers, and it tends to smolder, which is why reenactors love it for working around campfires, because it's naturally a little bit fire retardant, and it will burn itself out. I had a really hard time getting it to catch the flame, which is why I keep putting it back in. But you can see where it is burning, it shrinks away from the flame like hair does. Um, and when uh, it comes back into shot, you can see kind of granules on the edge. This really did smell like burning hair. So the next sample we're testing here is the 100% silk. Um, my notes say that silk burns slowly but doesn't melt, however I found that this burned really quickly and I don't know if it was the weight of the silk or not, but you can see there it turns almost immediately to ash. Um, much like wool it will smell like burning hair or feathers and again this really really did. The ash was quite gritty um, and flaked off very, very easily. So the last sample that I wanted to demonstrate this with is a polyester satin, um, a very, very synthetic fabric. I really wanted to try and demonstrate the way that this is highly flammable and burns and the way that it melts. So synthetic fibres like polyester will smell like burning plastic and they tend to melt into tiny, hard little pills. Um, you can see how shiny the edge gets here. Uh, it's quite glossy where it's been in the flame. Um, and it begins to kind of turn into little balls at the corners. Stray threads will turn into separate little pills. When this eventually catches, it really catches.
and there you go. And unlike the others, see that's just being devoured by the flame. All fabrics behave in different ways. And those behaviours are dictated by the type of fibre they're woven from and the weave. Now, synthetics can be made to emulate fairly well most natural fibres, however, they will never feel or look exactly the same. Sometimes a project calls for a synthetic fibre and sometimes it needs a natural fibre. So in this segment, we're going to talk about the different features of each that will help you with your project. Before we get into discussing this most exciting topic, however, I would like to say a little something about elitism and gatekeeping in costuming communities. Natural fibres may be more historically accurate. However, they are also more expensive, and this stops them being accessible to everybody. It is never, absolutely never, completely necessary to use a natural fibre for your project. If it's not in your budget, if you don't want to, if you have no interest in it, then you absolutely shouldn't. There's no reason to. You should be using whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, which fabric you use is an entirely personal decision, um, and unless you are making something for a production or planning to stand in a bonfire, um, synthetics are very flammable, then it shouldn't matter. With that out of the way, let's discuss some fabrics. So the biggest thing to remember, in my opinion, is that natural fibres breathe and synthetics do not. As cosplayers, uh, we are always thinking about putting fabrics on our bodies and how they will interact with our bodies when we move in them. Um, and it's not necessarily so much a problem in cooler countries, but in, in hotter climates, wearing synthetic fibres on your body can become a bit of an issue. So it's, it's something to bear in mind when you are making costumes from these fabrics. If you are going to an event in hot weather, you will always be cooler and more comfortable wearing a natural fibre, except maybe silk, on your body than you will be wearing a synthetic fibre, because when you're wearing a synthetic fibre, you are essentially wearing plastic. So of all of the four natural fibres, linen is the one that breathes the best. There is a reason that before the mass production of cotton in the 19th century, everyone's underwear was made from linen. I'm actually currently wearing a linen shirt, which historically was considered underwear. Linen is an incredible fibre. It wicks sweat and bacteria away from the body, processes it and filters it out into the atmosphere. This means that it doesn't retain bacteria and thus bad smells, it doesn't stain as easily. Uh, it's also self-cooling, which can be very, very useful in hot weather. Linen is one of the oldest fibres known to man. For example, it was the fabric that the ancient Egyptians made their clothes from. It's been with us for millennia. Next is wool. Uh, wool self-regulates, so in the winter it will keep you warm and in the summer it will keep you cool. This is a leftover trait from it actually being an animal product. Um, it also wicks sweat away from the body and it also breathes very well. Next best after wool, you have cotton. Now cotton wicks sweat and bacteria away from the body in the same way that wool and linen do, but unlike wool and linen, it retains the bacteria within its fibres, which means that it stains more easily and it retains smells more easily and it isn't necessarily as comfortable to wear as the previous two examples. Now the absolute worst fabric for keeping cool in hot weather is silk. Um, I always shed a tear when I see poor actors in um, programmes filmed in hot countries like the Caribbean wearing silk on their bodies because they must be suffering. Silk is uh, woven in such a way that it, it it's inc it's an incredibly tight weave. The fibres are spun on themselves and they're incredibly fine. Wearing silk in summer is very much like wearing a plastic bag. It's so densely woven that it traps all the warmth against your skin, um, which obviously is, is not ideal in, in hotter climates. The weave of each fabric tends to be what determines how it moves or behaves, whether it's floaty or structured, how much body it has, whether it's bouncy, whether it creases easily. This is very important to bear in mind when you're choosing fabrics for your project, which is why I far above anything else prefer fabric shopping in person, when I can feel and see exactly how a fabric is going to shift and move and how it will drape, how it will sit across the body, how it will react. And of course, if you can't fabric shop in person, then I would always recommend getting samples first. It's so risky <laughs> buying fabric without samples. So I have next to me some different fabrics, including silk, cotton, 
wool this is actually a little bit of a mix um, and two different weaves of linen here um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about the differences. I am wearing a linen shirt um, so you've seen for the video how this is moving on my body you can you can kind of see how it it, it supports itself um, so if I, I just sort of like squidge at my sleeve here it springs back on itself quite easily. Now linen will also hold a crease very well. I can I can pinch a crease into my shirt like this and it will it will stay there, there'll be a line there um, which can make it a bit of a nightmare to work with because you do have to iron it a lot. I have here two bundles of linen. They're both 100% linen as you can see rather unhelpfully they're both uh, the same colour um, except one of them is a linen twill and one of them is a straight up normal flat woven linen. Um, this one, much like my shirt, has quite a lot of bounce to it, it's quite a lot of body, um, it's cool to the touch, that's one big identifying factor of linen. It's rarely ever body temperature unless you've been wearing it for a really long time. Um, I can touch any part of this fabric that I haven't already been holding and it's cool. You can tell that it's a slightly cheaper linen to the linen that my shirt is made from because it has some slubs in it. Slubs are where um, the long strands of fibre that are used to weave a fabric are actually made up of cheaper, poorer quality, shorter strands. And the, the slubs that you get, which are the little kind of like fluffy bumps in fabric, are where the ends of the fibres are kind of untwisting and fraying and they, they bump out of the fabric when it's being woven on a, on a loom. So you can see here that this, this standard linen is still quite bouncy, it still has quite a lot of spring in it, um, but this linen twill is a little bit stiffer. It differs only very slightly, it's still, it's still quite bouncy, my apologies, both of these are in rather desperate need of an iron. Um, it's still quite bouncy, however it's just infinitesimally stiffer and more structured than the linen that isn't woven as a twill. Um, which just kind of goes to show that fabrics, even when they are the exact same fibre, the way that they are woven can change how they behave. Um, the other important thing to consider when you are using your fabrics is how you treat them. So if you can wash a fabric, because you can't wash all fabrics, you should do so. Um, how, whether you iron it, whether you starch it, all of these things will make a difference in the way that it moves and the way that it feels. Cotton, which I also have here, unlike linen, is closer to room temperature, it warms up a lot faster, um, it's less bouncy, it has less body to it, it, it crumples in your hands and folds up a bit more easily, um, it creases less easily as well. Wool fabrics uh, tend to have a bit more body to them as the fibres are generally larger. This isn't a hard and fast rule, you will get very very thick silk fabrics and very very lightweight wools, but on the whole wool has a bit more thickness to it, quite literally. This wool here is a mix, it's about 30% polyester, but that's small, a small enough amount that it won't really make any difference to the way that the fabric is behaving. Um, this is just a simple coating wool, um, it's kind of a, a medium weight, it's, it's fairly thin. Unlike many other fabrics, wool does not fray easily. This is because of the nature of its fibres, they want to um, felt and, and mesh together, so you can cut a raw reg on wool and it, it really won't fray very easily. This has been sitting in my room for a really long time and I have to like really pluck at it to get fibres to start coming out. Um, but if I wasn't bothering the edge it, it would be fine. Um, which can be really really important when you're constructing a garment if you need to leave edges raw. Silk fabrics tend to be very very lightweight. Again, not a hard and fast rule. You can get some very very heavy weighty silk fabrics but generally they're a bit lighter and finer, they have a sheen to them, they're very smooth and soft and as you may be able to tell, rather loud. Uh, I absolutely refuse to believe that any romance novel heroines are sneaking around dark castles at night in silk gowns because there's no way to sneak around in silk, it's impossible. 
Unlike wool, silk is one of those fabrics that frays very, very easily because the fabrics are so slippery and so fine, they just tend to unravel. Now that we've discussed natural fibres, some common traits of synthetics are that they are highly flammable, they crease less easily, um, depending on the weave they can fray very easily or fray not at all. Um, generally speaking, if it's a plastic based synthetic you'll be able to melt the edges, um, which can be useful. They tend to be harder to quantify because they are usually made to mimic natural fibres, so in some cases they will behave in very very similar ways and the only difference really will be a will be very very subtle. You can tell the difference between polyester wool um, and real wool pretty much based on feel. Um, they're, they're convincing in that they're woven to mimic natural fibres um, and the only real way to be able to tell the difference is to spend time familiarising yourself with the way that they behave um, and the way that they feel. Synthetic fibres, especially when it comes to wool, tend to want to cling to your hands a little bit more. Um, one big sign to look out for is static electricity. Um, obviously natural fibres don't tend to conduct that, whereas plastic, if you, you know, are moving it around or running your hand across it, they'll be, they'll be static. So the more familiar you become with different fabrics, the more easily you'll be able to identify them by sight and touch. I sincerely hope this video was helpful to you and I wish you the very best of luck in all of your fabric hunting endeavours. If you have any pressing questions I can be found on Instagram and TikTok at Woodsmoke and Words, on Twitter at Woodsmoke Words, and I'll also be doing a Q&A right here on this channel at the end of the month. Good luck fabric shopping!